Minglava Dosu. Minglava. We are very much honored to have you here at RFE uh, for the very first interview in US. And I think today you will make history because I'm going to bring up one issue that uh, the international community, including US, is very much interested to hear about it. That is the issue about the Rohingya in Rakhine State. And we would like to hear your thoughts on it. What do you, uh, is there, uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, there are two ways of looking at it. One is just looking at it from the point of view of what is happening now in Burma and also from the point of view of what is going on around the world. Because I think uh, these kind of communal conflicts are not, uh, are not confined to our country. You can find these conflicts everywhere, all over the world. I've always said, and this is the pol policy of my party, that human rights and rule of law are necessary in order to bring down tensions in such a situation. But in the long run, you have to build up harmony between the communities through understanding, through exchange of views. I think basically, whenever the, wherever there's hate, there's fear. For example, if you think of the word phobia, it means either irrational fear or, or intense dislike. So hate and fear are very closely related. You have to remove the roots of hatred. That is to say, you have to address these issues that make people feel insecure, that make people feel threatened. And human rights should be applied to everybody across the board equally, equally, just the same as rule of law will have to be. So this is what we will have to do, not just in the Rakhine state, but everywhere in the world where there's conflict. When you say you have to remove the hate, uh, don't you think it's a little bit um, hard to do that? Of uh, course, very hard. I said that hate is rooted in fear. So you have to remove the causes of insecurity, the causes that of fear, the, the, the reasons f for, the, um, for, for, for people to feel that they're threatened. These will have to be removed if you want to remove hatred and conflict. To remove all these, uh, do you have any specific sort of advice for all concerned, this, all the stakeholders to go from here? Whenever people talk about conflict resolution, whatever kind of advice they, they give, there's one that's unavoidable. You have to talk to one another. You have to negotiate. You have to sort out your problems through speech rather than through violence. Now, um, if we look, um, perhaps um, it's been about 20 years since that you've been in this, uh, shall we say, uh, movement. And when we look at it, there's a lot of uh, problems that you have come through, uh, personally as well as Burma also. And But now with the wind of change, we'll feel that there's some change in a positive light is coming. But at the same time, we still have a lot of problems. And I would like to hear your thought on the main, what is your main concern, immediate concern, uh, when we, if we are, since we are moving forward? I don't think you can just have one concern. Of course, there are many concerns, but all of them are out to do with how we can sustain the process of democratization. And basically, it comes down to our people. If you believe in democracy, you have to believe in the people. If you do not believe in the people, you had better not believe in democracy. So if you say that you believe in democracy, but you cannot uh, believe in the ability of the people to build democracy, then, then that's oxymoronic. You can't say one, th you can't put it that way. You've got to be consistent. So uh, my great concern is to empower the people, to empower them that they may be able to build up the kind of society they want. That is what democracy means, a society that is based on the ability of the people to sustain the institutions that will give them democracy. You use the word empowerment, and we know that um, our people have been living in dark ages, shall we say. So how do we go about empowering to understand the, the role they have to play in a demo democratic change 
for uh, the people. It, it's education, education in, in the formal as well as the informal broader sense. Education, better education system in the schools, but also as much dissemination of knowledge and information as possible outside the schools. So that's where institutions like the RFA come in. And uh, what else can you advise on what RFA rules should be? I think you should study the situation in Burma very carefully and try to help in the process of building up what I would call a healthy political culture. We are very weak when it comes to negotiated compromise. That's not part of our, our society. It's not part of our culture. Uh, for example, people are ashamed if they lose. People are ashamed of admitting that they have been wrong and uh, there people sit on their pride. There is a difference between, I would say rather than pride that uh, people cling to their vanity. There's a difference between vanity and pride. They can be the right kind of pride, but they can never, never be such a thing as the right kind of vanity. So in order to make people feel confidence in themselves is also important. People with self-confidence are more likely to listen to the opinions of others and to admit that they may have been wrong. But those who have very little confidence in themselves do not like to admit that others may be right and they may be wrong. And so there is a built-in uh, obstacle against negotiated compromise. How far have we come from being, uh, people being able to negotiate and, you know, even though you might uh, differ, uh, you agree to differ, but at the same time, you move on the same goal. Do you think how, since... You mean how far have our people come? Or yes, how? Uh, parties and from your own experience. Well, if we had not been capable of negotiated compromise, we would not be where we are now. Because after all, uh, it required negotiated compromise for us to contest the by-elections and then to enter the legislature. Uh, we in the, in the NLD have had to gain experience in this field for our survival as well as in order to carry out the work that we want to do for the people. Um, excuse, excuse me for looking at the paper because I have a lot of questions and I don't want to waste my time. Now, since you have a experience in dealing with uh, repressive government from your own experience. Do you have any advice for the countries that we are broadcasting into, like in, in Vietnam, you know, um, China, uh, North Korea? So from your own experience, do you have any advice for them? Well, not to any particular country, but for people who feel they're repressed. If they feel they're repressed, then obviously uh, it means that they want to be free from this repression. If they do not feel any repression, then they would not feel the need to be free. But if you feel that uh, you need to escape from a particularly um, uh, stultifying situation, then you have to work towards it. I always say that there's no hope without endeavor. If you want to be free, you work towards freedom. You don't just sit and hope for somebody else to do it for you. But in the case of Burma, a lot of people say that we are lucky to have sort of a leader like you, but in some other countries, they don't have a person, a sort of a charismatic leader like you. We don't have you. to depend on one single person in order to, to move. Well, if you would have nobody to mo lead you, then you'd better start and lead yourself. I think it is easy said than done. No, I no, suppose. it's not easy, I know, <laughs> but everybody can do it if they really set their minds to it. Any specific advice to these countries, how they can, you know? Well, you know how the Burmese say that the, 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 four, the four necessities of success. First, you have to start with uh, the wish to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have the perseverance to carry it through, and you have to have, uh, possess the right kind of spirit. And uh, finally, you have to have the right kind of wisdom. So you have to develop all four. But of course, it starts with the wish, with the desire. If you want the freedom, uh, if you really desire freedom, if you want change, if you want to bring about change, then you must have the perseverance to work towards it. And then, of course, you have the right kind of spirit. Uh, if, you are, if you have perseverance, but you're, you're easily discouraged, or you cannot, you cannot bear too much hardship, you're not going to be able to go through it. And then, of course, the right kind of wisdom, or if you like, the right kind of uh, 
ability to acquire the talents necessary. And um, a lot of people are saying that um, President Thinsing could be the uh, uh, Nobel laureate winner for this year, Peace Prize. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I haven't particularly thought about it. I have, in fact, I'm not, I did not even know that this was uh, what was being it's quoted about. It's speculation, I suppose, a lot of people. Yes, I, I don't believe in engaging in speculation.